Right, so this is the third and final part of this uh, warm-up pack for the 2017 Paper 2. Uh, in the last pack, uh, we looked at everything except for this section here, the calculations. Uh, we also bore witness to a horrific loss of memory uh, when I forgot pretty much everything that happened in the year 2010, which is uh, oh, a terrible occurrence. Uh, I even forgot that my football team uh, miraculously escaped relegation on the last day of the season uh, with a 3-0 away victory, um, which I was present at. Uh, and I, one of my favourite players, uh, a centre-back called Ian Goodison, scored uh, one of the goals that kept us up. Anyway, without further digression, uh, let's get on with these calculations. Right, so we kick off with a volumetric question, a titration question. And you can see that, um, I've uh, well, you can't see, but uh, I've actually adapted this from an IGCSE question. I've taken away all the structuring which was actually given in the question. Uh, so they broke it down into bits, but you might not get that. You might just get this bit of information, uh, the equation, and then told to calculate a concentration. So, as always, uh, I recommend writing down the little bits of information that you know. So you know you've got 25 centimetres cubed of sodium hydroxide. Uh, you know you've got 12.3 centimetres cubed of phosphoric acid. And you know that concentration of phosphoric acid is 0 0.5, 0 0.15 moles per decimeter cubed. And the question has asked us for the concentration of sodium hydroxide. So, where do we go from here? Well, um, obviously, well, not obviously, but the first thing we do on questions like this is to work out the moles. So, we're going to work out the moles of phosphoric acid, so H3PO4. And to work out the moles of a solution, we use the formula volume times concentration. So volume is uh, 12.3. And now we have to divide by 1,000 because we're computing centimetres cubed into decimetres cubed. Um, and then we times it by the concentration. And if you've got your calculator out, which I hope you have, that comes to 0 0.001845. And that's the first part of our calculation done. We can then use the ratios here to work out the moles of sodium hydroxide used. So if we had one mole of phosphoric acid, we'd need three moles of sodium hydroxide. So it's a 1 to 3 ratio. We're going to need to times this number by 3. And to help the examiner along, I'm going to write exactly what I'm doing down. So moles of sodium hydroxide. And that is 0 0.001845 times by 3. And that equals, just typing into my calculator now, 0 0.005535. So we've done two out of three stages. We now need to work out the concentration of sodium hydroxide, so concentration of NaOH. And hopefully we're still using that triangle. Maybe it would have been helpful if I'd put this here at the start, but I've got moles, conch, and vol. So concentration is moles over volume. And moles here, I've got 0 0.0. 0.005535 over volume. Now my volume is 25, but we must remember to convert that to decimeters cubed. And we do that by dividing by a thousand. And so if we put all that into a calculator, we should come out with 0 0.2214. And because it's a concentration, we put on units of moles per decimeter cubed. And that's the end of that calculation. A fairly standard GCSE question. This next calculation uses gas volumes and 
I can, oh, I hate it when this happens. I can immediately spot that I haven't put the two here in subscript, which is rather annoying. And they've made it a little bit easy because they've told us that rather than having volumes or concentrations of hydrochloric acid, they've already told us how many moles of the HCl they actually have. We've got 0.2 moles. And the question has asked us for the volume of CO2. So we can say moles of HCl, and I keep pressing something on the computer, which is why, or the iPad, which is why I keep pausing. Uh, moles of HCl equals 0.2, and it's a 2 to 1 ratio. So if I had two HCls, I'd only have one CO2. Um, so it's a 2 to 1 ratio, so we're going to times it by a half, because we'd have half the amount of CO2. So moles of CO2 is 0.2 times 1 over 2, which comes to 0.1. Now, we're told that one mole of gas occupies 24 decimeters cubed. Well, we haven't got one mole of gas. We've got 0.1 moles of gas. So the volume of CO2 needed is moles times 24. And I use this equation here because I'm dealing with a gas. That's important. Okay, so we've got 0 0.1 times by 24 and that comes out as 2.4 decimeters cubed uh, and that probably is worth two marks in an exam. One mark for working out your moles of CO2 and the second mark for working out your volume of CO2. And the next question looks at an electrolysis calculation. So here we are, a question based on the diaphragm cell. So we haven't even looked at the diaphragm cell in these uh, tutorial videos here. Um, but in the diaphragm, and you don't really need to know anything more other than what's given here. Um, you should do. You should know all about the electrolysis of brine. Um, but you can answer this question whilst knowing nothing about the electrolysis of brine. So, here you can see we've got chloride ions forming chlorine and two electrons are being released. So we've got a loss of electrons. So loss is oxidation. Um, and you can see we've used 100,000 amps and we've used it for two minutes. Now I'm hoping you can remember the equation Q equals I T. And current is obviously 100,000. And T, you might think, ah, oh, well that's obvious, it's two. But it's not two, I'm afraid, uh, because you have to convert your minutes into seconds. So two minutes is 120 seconds. So we'll have uh, 100,000 times by 120, uh, which comes to one, two, and then we're gonna have six zeros on the end here. And the units of charge are coulombs. And usually for people who do uh, GCSE or IGCSE physics, I find that quite straightforward. For those who haven't done IGCC physics, find that a little bit more tricky. Now, we know that we've made or we have used, and I'm just going to put a couple of commas in here just to help things along. We have used 12 million coulombs of charge. Now, I know because I'm told here that 96,000 coulombs of charge represents one mole of electrons, which is the same as one Faraday. Now, if I had had one Coulomb of charge, that would represent one ninety-six thousand, one ninety-six thousandth of a mole of electrons. So a tiny fraction, one ninety-six thousandth. But I didn't have one coulomb, I had 12 million coulombs. 
So I had 12 million lots of this, which means I've got 12 million lots of that. So 12 million coulombs is the same as 1 over 96,000 times by 12 million. Okay, and that comes out as 125 moles. Now that is a large number of moles. Maybe I've made a mistake actually in this calculation. Now that's our moles of electrons. So let's just check um, that we haven't made a mistake because that to me sounds rather a large amount of moles. Um, no, the maths looks okay, but the actual question has asked us for the moles of chlorine. So if I have two moles of electrons, I'd have half the number of moles of chlorine. So, moles of Cl2 is 125 divided by 2 times a half, which is 62.5. And that makes it nice and easy, the fact that they've just asked us for moles. They might have asked us for the mass, in which case you'd have had to have taken your moles and converted it into mass. Okay? Or volume, in which case you'd have had to take your moles and times it by 24, as in 24 decimeters cubed. But that concludes uh, this video uh, of questions that potentially might come up on paper two of the IGCSE paper in 2017.